Hello and welcome to this brief tutorial on business intelligence with me, James from Matador Software. Uh, this is one of the industries where there's the most jargon um, and by nature of it being so fast growing, sometimes jobs are consumed, it's unclear where you should start or even what, what the, the whole industry is about. So I'm going to try and break this down into an overview, job titles, technology used, sort of the job function or what you may expect to do within a BI role, and then also some resources. So without further ado, we'll get going. So an overview of business intelligence. Well, what is business intelligence? It's the discipline and process by which enterprises use strategy and technology to analyze current and historical data with the objective of improving strategic decision-making and providing companies with a competitive advantage. Now, if you actually want to bring this into layman's terms a bit more and bundle it up, you can think of BI software as a whole as just being a package of ETL, extract, transform, load, warehouse structures and reporting tools such as Power BI or Tableau, ways that we can visualize data. Um, and that enables people to harness their enterprise data. Now, business intelligence is a title that's used interchangeably with technology and a multitude of data careers. Now, this is in part, like I said, due to the data field exponentially growing and traditional roles such as ETL developers or database administrators being consumed by new and involving titles. So if we go ahead here, we can actually look at an example of a, a classic BI architecture or dimensional data model. So this image of a classic BI architecture is from the Data Warehouse Toolkit uh, by Ralph Kimball, who's considered one of the fathers of business intelligence. So what we can see here is essentially, this, is, this aims to be a whole representation of a business's process. That's what we want to do with our BI architecture, but we want to make it effective and efficient to gather data and get to the right granularity or level of detail. So that may be sort of individual transactions. So we start with source transactions. This could be in a transactional system or a proprietary software. It goes through some cleaning, some ETL, extract, transform, load into the data warehouse. It then goes through another level of cleaning into the presentation area where you may see star schema or OLAP cubes. Of course, if you work with Power BI, you're gonna know star schema where we look to get things to a sort of denormalized state and an efficient way of retrieving our data. And then we can go into the actual BI element, the, the sort of presentations, the data visualization. But, you know, even if you're, you're not familiar with sort of operational systems, staging areas, ETL software, data lakes, data marts, presentation areas, the fact of the matter is these principles were first documented around 30 years ago by Ralph Kimball and colleagues, but they're still more relevant than ever. Um, and if you fully understand these principles, this is really where you need to start with business intelligence. It ultimately contributes to a proper top-down BI strategy when you go into working in organizations, correctly aligning your business intelligence systems with business processes and a successful framework that can grow by iteration. So now let's look at some of the technology that you, you'd likely to be using, whether that's tools or languages when you work in business intelligence. So we've mentioned you really need to know sort of architecture and you may use Synapse, you may use Azure SQL for that side of things, um, but you really need to use a visualization software. But if we start at the very beginning actually, Excel is very handy and there's, there really is a debate around the, the application of Excel and business intelligence and data. But if we look at a strictly business intelligence point of view, you're likely going to want to implement self-service. So if your strategy works, users can actually serve and simple queries and you'll be left to work with sort of data requests, maintaining architecture, um, bespoke queries and sort of more complex dashboards and reports. So actually Excel is going to be a valuable tool in your strategy for, you know, business stakeholders or end users. And obviously Power Pivot and Power Query has helped Excel be more competitive in that aspect. Next, what I would look at would be SQL, 
where you can then start to pull information from relational databases and you can build that into your business intelligence strategy so that people can that can be your route one um, to get information quickly if an end user or a, or a business stakeholder has a question. You can then move on to Power BI or Tableau or Click or whatever that visualization tool may be. I would suggest Power BI it's sort of the leader now, especially with its close links to the Microsoft stack, um, like Power Automate and, and SQL and Excel, etc. Power Apps is becoming very popular um, and we have the, the mutual strength of the Power Platform. So that's going to be your key way to actually, once you can shape data, you can build architecture, you can then model it um, within Power BI, then you can actually start to present these insights in a language that stakeholders can understand. And I would also recommend, you know, R and Python. For me, I potentially see a bit more value in Python due to the ability to automate tasks. If you can get to grips with Power BI Server and you maybe you don't have premium licensing or the capacity to pay for that, then Python may help you there with automation. But it'll help you with your everyday tasks and increasing efficiency, which is something you'll be looking to do in the world of BI. Now, job functions is an interesting area because it can be really vast depending on the company you work, and this can really change. So some BI analysts may just work, you know, in a Power BI capacity with a bit of um, Excel and SQL. However, some may be expected to do much more of the architecture and, you know, traditionally sort of data engineering or down the data science route, um, but your job title may still be BI analyst. And this is obviously due to the industry growing quickly, people not knowing as much when they're hiring people for these positions because it's suddenly become a huge need um, in many businesses' eyes. And also, it really depends um, on, on the size of the company and, and this should be evaluated on a case-by-case on a -case basis. So you can see here from this, this graphic there could be several elements, data warehousing, marts, mining, you know, we've got to consider end users, communication, networking, reporting tools, visualization, access requirements. To name a few, you know, you've got forecasting and challenges and self-service and sort of which uh, schema do you choose when modeling your data, legacy data systems. Now, what I would say is, you know, if you have the core elements of business intelligence architecture, SQL, a visualization tool, some Excel and Python, you're, you're going to be able to handle all of this. Uh, and the other elements, you can sort of incorporate that just-in-time learning to pick it up. Context is really important. So um, obviously, when you're in a business, that business context and requirements and scoping and communication is going to guide you towards what you actually need to know. Now, job titles, again, is another area, if you've not been in the, in the industry, which can be, you know, very, very confusing. So you could see ETL engineer, a DBA, database administrator, an analytics engineer, BI engineer, BI consultant, BI analyst, and so on, the list goes on. But this, again, is down to the fact that sometimes companies don't have the budget to hire a full department or they potentially don't know that they need to. It may be your job to manage expectations on that front. But, you know, BI analysts, developers, BI engineer, you can usually gauge that they're doing quite a lot of the similar things and really having a strength of those core foundation of technology um, and architecture is going to set you apart anyway. So I wouldn't be too concerned, obviously, ETL engineers and DBAs traditionally have a very, very in-depth knowledge of performance um, with databases. So that is quite specialist. But um, yeah, really, if you have the core elements down, I think you'll be okay. Now, in terms of resources, I would make some honorable mentions before I go on to these four books. So I would say that YouTube is fantastic. I, I learn so much on there daily. I would harness the power of LinkedIn because... A lot of people see it as a job network, but if you really connect with other data professionals, you're going to get new information as it's released, people's videos, blogs, as you log into one platform. And that's exceptionally powerful in an industry where you really need to be learning most days because it changes so quickly. So four books that I would recommend, The Data Warehouse Toolkit, as I said, by Ralph Kimball and Margie Ross. This is paramount for an understanding of 
BI and data. So look, look into that. With data visualization, storytelling with data is fantastic and it's quite a light read, but there's a lot of important da data visualization principles you may not originally consider, such as the effect of color, real estate, um, context, and all these visual elements are going to be mentioned here and it'd be important when you go to present an information to stakeholders who are generally quite busy. Expert data modeling with Power BI is hands down one of the best Power BI, Power Query data modeling books I've read. So yeah, if you are using that as a visualization tool, I would suggest checking it out. And A Beginner's Guide to SQL Server was one of the first SQL books I read. I found it very useful, very comprehensive and quite theoretical, which I like without being overwhelming. So that's been my roundup of business intelligence. I think it's very confusing for people who are new to the industry or involved in one or two of the technologies and sort of at a time of applying for positions. If there's anything you would add, please comment below. And as usual, if you like this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you. Thank you.